Game Maker, how to put the player in the right spot when they switch rooms. For example, you have an adventure game, player goes through a cave or a door, they go to another room, and now the player's in a certain spot. But when they go through the cave to go back to another room, you find that the player's not quite where they should be. Like, let's say you assume they uh, leave the right screen, so when they come back to that room, they should be back on that side of the right screen. I'm going to give you some ideas how you can do that. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of persistent, here's what we're going to do in this one is we're actually going to use persistence. Now, I'll show you the uh, typical one a beginner will do is what I have set up here. This door is set up to go to the next room, and that looks okay. But when I go back to the first room, I'm way over here. And what we would expect is we'd probably expect the player to be over here. Right? So it doesn't look so funny. So I'll just do it for room one to room two, and you'll probably get the idea. Now, the first thing you have to do here, this is probably the easiest way to do it, is we take the player object, and we make the player object persistent. Now, if you're not familiar what persistent means, it means that the player object will now live, once it's made, that player object never changes or destroys or gets recreated when you switch rooms. So when I go from room one to room two, if I'm persistent, the player object will stay exactly where it was when the room was switched. The create method will not run, so any code you have in here, especially something like player points, won't rerun and get set back to zero. So it's actually quite a useful one to do, is to make your player persistent. Just let me show you what ends up happening here when I do make the player persistent. Keep in mind, the way I have set up right now, that's room one. That's the second room. That's the third room. Notice I do have a player object in each of those rooms. So let's see what the overall effect on the persistence is. So when I go to the next room, since I've made my player persistent, notice this player over here, that's my original player. Okay, he never changed, never died, never got recreated. But I'd placed a player object in the room over there. And so that's why you're seeing the second player take place. So I'm going to have to get rid of that one. Just like if I go to this one, now I've added on a third player. So when you do add persistence, you don't want to actually have these player objects in the other rooms anymore. You don't need them. You just need one player object, and that one player object will be totally fine. So here's going from this room to the second room, okay, and having the player pop up in the right place. When I do switch rooms, if I'd like the player to pop out right here, just check out your X and Y location near your door. So it's, let's say, right here. I'll just uh, ballpark that at 3,200. So let's make the player jump there when they hit the door. So player hits the door. If it was a room zero door, I'm going to actually do a little more work. I'm going to go to room one, and I'm going to set the X position of the player. I already forgot what it was. 50, and the Y position to 200. Okay, I think that's close enough. So that should plunk it right on the left side of the screen, right about, whoops, wrong room. That'll plunk it right about there. Now, when the player tries to go back to room one, they touch this door, I would like the player to end up here. So I sort of look at the X and Y positions down here, and I see that that's 700, 300, close enough. And so let's key that in. Player hits a door. That was this door here that went back. And that was X equals 700, Y equals 300. And it then goes back to that room zero. So let's test this out, see what happens. <clears throat> I don't know if you heard that on the mic. That was angry children. Here we go. I go in, and I'm back. So I go in, I'm there. When I touch the door, I'm back to a reasonable location, right? And obviously, you can fine-tune that to make that work. Not too bad, huh? 
So a lot of people that do their doors, now if you wanted, you could go fix the next one. That's so a little weird, right, that I pop up over there. So now you do have to start doing this for all your doors. Now for a beginner, if you don't have too many rooms, this uh, you know isn't too bad doing all these if statements, and obviously you'll have a whole chain of them. There are more efficient ways to do this uh, later on if you learn about arrays or maps. You can actually shorten this code a little bit. But the bottom line, you do have to you know, remember the positions you want your player to pop in and out of. Thanks for watching.